Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at how you can allow S3 event notifications to trigger services like Lambda, SNS and SQS on another AWS account. The steps we are going to follow in sequence are as follows. So first we'll create an S3 bucket in account A and we'll create a Lambda function in account B. And then in account B we are going to add account A's S3 bucket resource permission. And after that, in account A, we are going to create an S3 event notifications with account B's Lambda function ARN. So till here, we will have S3 event notifications set it up that is going to trigger Lambda on account B. Further, we are going to look at some additional bits where you can allow this Lambda to read and write objects in the S3 bucket of account A. For that, we are going to look at what resource permissions are needed in S3 to allow account B Lambda to read and write S3 objects. And if your bucket is KMS encrypted, we'll look at what additional permissions you need. And in the last, we are going to look at what are the limitations of AWS KMS managed keys. So let's get started. So as you can see, I have opened both of the AWS accounts on different browsers. I will treat the left account as account A and the right one as account B. So let's go ahead and create a Lambda function on account A. Uh, we are going to use a blueprint. You can type in Python S3 get object Python. That should do. I'm going to call this Lambda as S3 events. Uh, we are going to let AWS uh, create a role for us with the name S3 event role. And we're going to allow this to create the policy for us, the default policy, which should do. The code looks okay. And in here, for now, we are going to remove the S3 trigger, create function. A Lambda function in account A is all set it up. I'm going to uncomment uh, this line and deploy. Now let's head over to account B and create a new bucket. Or we can use existing bucket. I'm gonna call it Maxcotech S3 events uh, Lambda test. Uh, let's keep this uh, bucket on the same region where our Lambda is. So let's allow our S3 bucket to enable the default encryption uh, using the AWS uh, managed keys and create bucket. So to add the S3 event notifications, uh, you go to S3 bucket properties and right at the bottom you will see uh, event notifications. So you create a new event notification and name it as uh, trigger account a lambda function and leave the prefix and suffix as it is and going to trigger lambda on every object created. And here while selecting the lambda function, we are going to add the ARN of the lambda function of the account A. So we copy this and paste it here. And if we do save changings, this is going to give us an error saying that uh, it's unable to validate the following destination configurations. And that is because we haven't added any uh, resource space permissions or policy on this Lambda function here. So to do that, first we're going to go to configurations of a Lambda function. Uh, in the permissions, right at the bottom, you'll have resource space policy. So add permissions, select AWS services, select S3, S3 events permission. Uh, on the source account, I should be giving the account number of where our S3 bucket is. So we copy this and paste and the ARN of the S3 bucket. Copy. And actions, we are going to select Lambda invoke function. Save. So as you can see, after adding the resource base policy, we can now see an S3 trigger here. If you click this, you will get an error message saying you do not have permissions to access this bucket. This is fine because the root user, which we are using in this uh, web UI, does not have access to this uh, remote uh, S3 bucket. So you are going to see that, don't worry, but the S3 notifications is still going to work. So let's move ahead. So after adding the resource space policy in our Lambda, now let us retry uh, setting up the S3 email notifications in our S3 bucket, uh, everything is there in place. We already copy pasted the Lambda function ARN. And this time, if we do save changings. Yep, as you can see, now our S3 has allowed us to set up an email notification against the Lambda function, which is on another account. So yeah, all good. 
So till now the S3 email notifications on account B should now successfully be able to trigger Lambda function or on account A. And let us quickly test that. Uh, go to objects and uh, upload an item. Drag and drop any file over here. Uh, upload. Successfully uploaded. Now if we look at the logs of our Lambda, go to CloudWatch logs. So we should see the lambda triggered at uh, yep right at this time 11:52. The object that it has identified is uh, key image.png, and yep all looks good. One more thing to keep in mind while setting up the S3 event notification is that AWS does not allows you to set up multiple event notifications on the same prefix. So in this case, as you can see, this even notification is on the entire bucket. So if, if an object is created in this bucket, uh, an event will be generated. Now, if we try to create another event, uh, let's call it test. And this time we say if any object is created under uh, this directory, anum, put. Now, if we try to save changes here, it is going to give us an error saying that the configuration is ambiguous, cannot have overlapping suffix in two rules if the prefix are overlapping. And that's exactly what I was mentioning because an existing event notification is set it up on the entire bucket. So we cannot add anything in here. And similarly, if we only have an event notification for anum prefix, uh, we cannot have another event notification for anum uh, test or any subdirectory inside this directory here. So let's move on to the next step, which is, uh, of course, as you can see, uh, we are not actually allowed to uh, read the objects. So in order to grant this permission, we have to confirm two things. One is the identity based policy, which is the role that is attached with this Lambda function. So let us uh, have a look at this role. All right. So these are the policies attached by default. Uh, which is giving sex to the CloudWatch logs. And the second one is uh, is actually on get objects on all of the S3 resources. So it should be fine. So I think um, on the identity based policy in uh, Lambda function looks good. The only thing which is missing is that because of the fact our S3 bucket is KMS encrypted. So we have to add another inline policy here. We select the service as KMS. We should have an action called decrypt and on the resource we have to specify the KMS key uh, used in our account B uh, S3 bucket to encrypt the S3 object. So we can uh, get the ARN of that uh, KMS key from here. I think it's in properties there. Uh, so we copy this and add an ARN paste review policy so the identity based policy on our lambda function role should be sufficient enough to read the objects from s3 but we are still missing one thing which is actually adding a resource based permission on s3 bucket itself to allow uh, this role to read and write objects on this s3 bucket so to do that we're going to the properties we're going to the permissions and in here, uh, add it, we say adding statement. So the S3 bucket resource based policy should look something like uh, this. We are only allowing uh, account A is uh, this specific role, which is attached with the Lambda role, uh, on action get objects on the source, uh, this current bucket. So I think that should be the minimum uh, S3 policy that you need. And you say save changings. And hopefully this should work now. Let us upload the same object again and go back to our CloudWatch logs. So we actually surpassed that specific error. Now we are with the new one. So it says uh, get object operation. The ciphertext refers to a customer master key that does not exist. The reason that you are seeing this is because we have added a source permission on S3 bucket itself to allow Lambda, but we haven't added resource permission on the KMS key itself to allow this Lambda role to use that KMS key. So we have to do similar thing uh, as we did for S3 uh, with the KMS key. So if you go to the KMS keys, 
the one which is used here. So on this KMS uh, key policy over here, we have to add the IAM role of this Lambda function. But here comes the limitation of AWS. Because of the fact that we are using AWS managed KMS key, we are not allowed to change or amend the key policy of this key. Instead, you have to use a customer managed key. In order to do so, make sure that your S3 bucket is uh, not encrypted at all. Or if it is, then you must use uh, your own generated KMS key, which should fall under this customer managed KMS keys. So with that limitation, what we are going to do instead is change the KMS key of uh, our S3 bucket to our customer managed key instead of AWS managed, and then check and verify whether the Lambda can read and write the objects in that case. So for that, go to the properties of S3 bucket and uh, edit the default encryption. So instead of AWS manage, uh, select choose from your AWS KMS keys. So in this case, we are going to create one. For now, we can go with the symmetric one. That's not an issue. So we call it as S3 KMS key. Next, it is going to ask you like who can admin this key. So for now, let's not add anything because we are just going to create a minimal policy for this uh, key. Finish. Now let us add additional policy into this KMS key. Switch to policy view. Because this is a customer managed KMS key, so that's why we can edit this. So um, we are going to add one more statement in here, which should look something like uh, allow on principle in this case will be the ARN of the Lambda role, which is on the another account. And we allow the following actions on we can select the specific s3 bucket here or all as well so so for now let's let's go ahead with this and save changings all right so resource space policy has been added now let's head over to our lambda function to add the identity based policy we go to the configuration and i already have the role open here so on our existing inline policy for kms let's edit this so copy the ARN of this uh, new KMS key and paste it over here. Save changings. Now this Lambda should be able to read uh, the S3 object. So let us go ahead and try that. So it seems like we still are getting the permission issues. Um, so I think one of the things that I missed is I did create the KMS key, but I forgot to apply or change that KMS key in the S3. So this is still using the old one, the, the AWS managed. Yep, so let us edit that. Choose from existing. Uh, so we created this one just now. Save. Yep. All right, let's test that again. And check out the recent logs. There you go, as you can see, our Lambda function can now successfully read the content of history objects. And in the same way, you can actually set up the event notifications for SNS topic and SQS topic as well. So that is all for this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye.